What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Geo, and today I've got a, uh, a GBA Season 6 related playoff picture video along with my uh, my season wrap up. So, this will be the last uh, video I put out for the GBA for Season 6. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple of things uh, my thoughts on the season, how the. Um, how I think the playoffs will pan out. Uh, talk a little bit about my my team and what I'm going to be looking forward to moving on uh, to the next season and uh, my future in the GBA. So uh, I'll say it right now. I am returning for for season seven. I have no uh, desire or <laughs> uh, reason to to not return. I'm still enjoying the GBA. Uh, but uh, this was a bad season for me for for several reasons. And uh, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit now. So first, I'm going to go over my record. I end the season four and eight with a minus two differential. Uh, what that means is when I win, I win big. And when I lose, I, I really don't lose by that much. I lost twice as many games as I won this this season, which is pretty bad considering the last the two other seasons uh, prior to this that I was engaged in. I went 50-50 with teams that were lorded as being significantly worse than my current team. Uh, there were always analysts and fans alike have really had very negative things to say about my teams in the past, but this one was very hyped and uh, it didn't end up working out for me for a couple of reasons, part of which uh, was my fault and uh, part of which was for things that were a little below the surface and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. So let's go over my my season. I started out 3-0. and oh. My first three wins were 4-0, 6-0, and 5-0 wins and people were putting me at the the top of the power rankings and uh, like oh how, how can you beat Geo? Uh, I then lost my my week four match uh, against the Atlanta Hall Luchas after making just a a miserable play that honestly plagued me it honestly that uh, I probably couldn't get over that loss for uh, it took me probably about three weeks before I stopped feeling bad about that loss because it was a hundred percent on me I had built the team with one singular goal in mind and I could have activated it at just the right moment and I didn't I rushed it. That was the week, for those of you that might remember it, uh, I played against Fizz and a plus two speed um, Nitto King could have one shot every single member of his team except for three Pokemon. He brought one of those Pokemon and I said to myself, I got a week in this first and then I didn't do because if it's physically defensive, it'll die, but if it's not physically defensive, it'll live. And I didn't weaken it first, and then I thought, well, it's probably not specially defensive. Uh, Baton passed an agility into my Nidoking and failed to one-hit KO it. And then still battled that match out, had a chance to win still, but uh, didn't end up panning out for me, so I lost 2-0. And I am still hurt by that match. still consider it one of the worst decisions I've ever made in the GBA to go for that at the wrong time and not play intelligently. And that bothered me. That bothered me a lot, a lot, a lot. The next week, I played against the Milwaukee Saws Bucks and Battler X, and he beat me just because he outprepped me. He brought substitute on everything, and I wasn't prepared to do it, uh, to handle it. So uh, I lost that match. Um, the next week, I lost to Newcastle United in uh, a game that he, he just outplayed me, I think. It was a very close match. I lost 2-0. Uh, the very end, I could have handled it maybe a little bit differently. Um, all of the hindsighters think that they like saw the path to victory, but in the middle of the moment, I guess I didn't. I didn't see it, so uh, I lost that match just fair and square. The next week, I played against the Philadelphia Scissors and again lost fair and square. Um, Chimpak, great, uh, great battler, made it to the playoffs. He's a good friend. Uh, and he just straight up beat me. I, I didn't I didn't prep very well. He prepped very very effectively and uh, I just I didn't feel great about that match the week after that I played against John and the, I lost that match five to three on a timeout uh, And I'm pretty sure I would not have lost that match if I hadn't been crit so I mean it happens to everybody but it was the first of 
several situations that resulted in me making big team changes. Um, I won my next match against the Pittsburgh Piratitas 2-0 in a match that felt like it was a little more than 2-0. Uh, then following that, I lost to the Real Maril after um, what I would say, it was a good move by Miguel's part, but the thing that lost me the game was getting fully paralyzed. It happens, of course, but it, it, it was really unfortunate. Then I had a 4-4 draw with the Utah Jasmine, which the game gave the win in his favor. Again, uh, I think I should have won that match. The reason I didn't is that I got the lowest possible roll on a Thunderbolt from a modest choice scarfed Zapdos against a Staraptor with a Wakan Berry. Lowest possible roll and literally any other roll. I think it was 10 out of 11 rolls would have killed him and I got I got the lowest one and it didn't. So that was very frustrating. I felt I should have won that one. And then uh, I lost to the Sawsbucks again in the last week. I don't know. Uh, so truth be told, I, the season was over for me already, so I wanted to bring some fun sets. He wanted to bring some fun sets. His fun sets beat me. Uh, nothing to say about that one other than he just beat me fair and square. So the unfortunate thing is looking back at how many people will see nothing but the numbers at the end of the season and, and think that I had a terrible season. And you know what? I agree with them. I thought I had a horrible season. I was expecting better for myself this season. Um, and the biggest thing about it is that I have myself to blame because I think a big reason for my end of end of the season streak of losses was that I made some horrendous trades, just truly terrible trades. And the reason I made those is because I was in a bad place psychologically about this season, not like in general. Uh, uh, my, my mental health is fine, but uh, just in general, the season really wore down on me. Um, I had a couple of losses and immediately I started second guessing every Pokemon on my team, one of which was Manaphy, who I then traded for Latias. Uh, that was a big mistake for several reasons. One, having a second Defogger, that's great, except that both my Defoggers are weak to Dark. Um, it's a Dragon type, which I thought was cool, and I used it for that purpose, and that was great, but when I used it for that purpose offensively, I was either lacking in Defog, or I had to bring Zapdos to making my team weak to Ice. I also uh, share that weakness, a lot of the Psychic weaknesses, with Cresselia, and that didn't work out super great for me. I had also traded Chestnut away for Metagross because I wanted a Steel type. Again, it was Psychic. So I ended up giving myself a massive Dark weakness. The only real resist I had to that being Grand Bull, whose special defense is lacking and who would often just get uh, taken out by a lot of the Dark threats anyway for one other coverage reason or another. And Mega Absol, who can't really take a hit Mega Absol, I liked on my team. Uh, I like that it's a tier 2 pickup. I think it's very powerful offensively, and it really was a, a benefit to have on the team, even if it didn't come every week. I really did like him on the team. But just the, I dug myself this huge hole where I had a team I could work with at the beginning of the season, even if there were very, very, very obvious problems with it, it could still work for me. And then I just, I ruined it. I completely ruined it, and that uh, kind of bothers me a little bit um, for several reasons. One, it means in future seasons I'm going to be much less willing to trade, and I don't like that. I don't like because there are several coaches in the league who are already like that. They don't want to trade, not because it may or may not benefit them, but because they would never do anything to help another team. Like, it, I'm not thinking of anyone in specific. They're just people like that. They build the team they want, and then they don't want to. They don't want to look at anything else. They don't want to do free agents. They don't want to trade. They just want to keep it and our trade system currently and I know we're going to talk about this all the coaches are going to get together in the offseason and talk about this but uh, the coaches we've set up a system that I think makes for a very fair draft makes the teams very interesting makes it much more balanced but makes it very 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 hard to trade very hard super limiting and it's really unfortunate um I Personally, if, if the votes come to me, I'll just let you guys know now. The way I'm going to vote in favor of trading is that once the teams are set legally, that's fine, and you can trade however you want, 
um, as long as the rest of the league gets a say on vetoing unfair trades to prevent collusion. Um, but I think, what and what I mean by that is, if all of a sudden uh, I realize my season's over and I go, you know what, I don't want my tier 1 anymore, hey, I like your tier 5, and you make a completely unbalanced trade that boosts up another team, I don't want that to happen. But there are tons of times where I wish I could have traded a tier 1 for a tier 2, but I couldn't or something like that. You know, I wish I could have gotten rid of uh, one of my tier 3s, but then I wouldn't have had two tier 3s, so that's banned. Even though a tier 4 would have helped me more, I can't do stuff like that because of the very severe limitations that we put upon ourselves to make fair drafting, but in the middle of the season, I re it just doesn't... I feel like it was very hampering, and so I had a problem with that. Um, so I tried to make trades where I could. I thought it was in my favor sometimes kind of I guess I got it in my head that Manaphy wasn't really doing much even though it was doing something massive every single week and I regret that I regret trading Manaphy um, I do not regret trading Miltank I think Grand Bull helped me out a lot uh, in a couple of matches uh, it helped me a ton um, after I got rid of Chestnut also I really needed him there uh, Chestnut wasn't doing a ton for my team outside of one particular matchup and I won that matchup twice um, So uh, you know That being against Tup it was very helpful against Tup because he didn't bring uh, Flying coverage, but then there was a chance that he could have brought that next time we battled and so I'm glad I'm glad I had Granville That was a good trade Chestnut for Metagross Probably not a great trade. Metagross didn't really do anything for me. Latias did do something for me, but it's something that Manaphy also could have done. And so I, I regret that trade also. Uh, looking at the rest of the team, Zapdos is a... You know, wasn't always a tier 1 pick, but got boosted there. And I completely agree with that. Zapdos is an amazing pick. I really love Zapdos. If it... If I look into future draft plans and it fits on my team again, I'd be happy to have it again. I don't know if that will happen, but I I think it's a very solid pick. Definitely deserving of a look in round one or round two. Entei, I love Entei. What it does, it does supremely well, and very few other Pokemon in the metagame can do it. I really, really love Entei. Um, it forces massive amounts of pressure on the opponent's team building to have answers for it. It can... It's made some amazing moves for me, uh, amazing top plays for me. I love Entei. Love that Pokemon so much. Uh, it is a flagship of my team for so many reasons, and I'm just really happy with Entei. Um, Cresselia, mixed bag. Uh, I think Cresselia's passive nature and inability to phase made people want to bring Substitute against me. Um, and that that hurt because ditto already kind of encourages substitute and I cannot stand that move just in general I don't like substitute I don't think it's in a league like this where you know your opponent's team it encourages you to make it encourages a lot of switching and that's something that substitute takes advantage of really effectively for a lot of people uh, a lot of Pokemon I should say and I just don't like the move. I think it's a mindless move. I think it doesn't take any skill. You don't even really need to predict a switch because if you're wrong, the penalty is that you set up a sub. If you have leftovers, that's really a very low uh, damage amount that you're taking as a penalty there anyway. So I think it's a... I don't like it because I think it's a skillless move. And I know that there's lots of Pokemon that are like that. Like you might say that some Pokemon in general uh, I know Talonflame has a really bad reputation because like just click Brave Bird, but that's not right because Talonflame can build, you know, very unique sets. But if you have Substitute on a Pokemon, 90% of the time it doesn't really matter what's happening in the battle, just click it because you want to be behind the sub. I, I don't like it as a move. I, I think it's it, it is it reminds me of Gliscor, which is you should play Gliscor this way because that's the most effective way to do it, which is just mindlessly stalling. Uh, it, I don't, I just don't like it, and I know that there are times where it can be really clever and a really good use of sub can really turn things uh, in your favor, but in general, the Cresselia baited a move that I want to discourage as much as possible on my team, so I didn't like that about it, but I think overall it's a very solid Pokemon. Um, 
I think it's very easy to take advantage of. I know that I think it's one of the Pokemon that might be on the vote for boosting to tier one. I really don't think it's deserving of tier one. I think, uh, I mean, it's gone undrafted as tier two in the past. So I think it, I just don't think it's deserving of tier one. But what I do like about it, it serves a purpose very similar to Porygon 2, which is it, uh, it's a phenomenal um, answer all as a as a wall it, it can wall just about anything if it's designed to do so with very few exceptions and the only real problem of it is its severe lack of offensive presence but um it's a good pokemon it really is uh latias joined my team at the very end of the season so i'll talk a little bit about both manaphy and latias manaphy got a kill pretty much every week it was brought or it checked a pokemon very effectively every week it was brought manaphy is a great pokemon amazing pokemon and uh, i shouldn't have traded it I don't, I guess I was looking at it on too linear a scale and I didn't, when I traded it, I still don't, I don't know what was going through my head at the time. I think I, I think I said to myself while I was chatting with, uh, I traded it to George and while I was going through that trade in my head, I was like, my season's over. I don't care. Here, take it. And I, I got a Latias for it and it performed adequately, but I don't, honestly, I barely even think it's a tier one. That's. Uh, that's the point I'm at with Latias right now. I've had it for two seasons. It's okay. Uh, very, very easy to take advantage of. Very easy to punish. Very easy to trap. Defensively, it's only adequate. Um, it's usually broken by most significant special attackers, but it can mop up some of the weaker ones. Its support move pool is what makes it most effective, but that ends up making it... I don't know, it just, it just doesn't quite carry its weight as far as I'm concerned. Not looking forward, to, or not looking at drafting uh, any of the Lottie Twins in the near future. Um, the Mega Absol pick, loved it, uh, liked having it, great tier 2 pickup. Very significant weaknesses uh, in several areas. Uh, the thing is, the way I played it on my team build maybe wasn't entirely right. Uh, I think it's a better... It's great to have mixed coverage. The problem is that it's so easy to kill that its coverage doesn't really matter unless it's going to one-shot something. And the way you draft... A lot of Pokemon that are very susceptible to getting one hit by coverage moves don't get drafted in this league. It, we play the game we play in a very intelligent way such that you build teams knowing the threats and the problem with having coverage on Absol is that it won't really do the trick all the time. So. I ended up playing it very similar to how I played the Mega Pinsir last season, which is that if I get a setup with it, I win. And it's pretty easy as a Pokemon to arrive at that situation. Unfortunately, uh, my team this season was not set up to do that. There's not a lot of whittling potential on my team. I didn't have great um, hazard setters and my hazard control was only defog, and my team is a little bit weak to hazards myself. Not supremely weak, I didn't have any four times weaknesses to rocks or anything, but um, two of my main brings every week were uh, weak to rocks. So, uh, that being Zapdos and Entei. So, in that regard, the magic bounce effect of, of Absol really only helped me kind of once and that was in a really fair switch in against a super obvious support Pokemon and so other than that I felt like I didn't get a lot of use out of it and maybe that's because I played it wrong maybe it is but uh, in general it's a mod that I'm I'm glad I drafted this season and it did great things for me and I think it's a very strong mod and I think it probably deserves to be a tier one pick uh, because I think someone who has it on a team that's a little better suited to take advantage of it will use it to massive use. Nidoking, like Nidoking, I think it deserves its spot in the tier that it's in. I think it's very powerful. It can be hard to switch into. It can be hard to prepare for. But it's obvious what it's going to do. It doesn't have a lot of unique subsets. Uh, not sub, as in substitute sets. Like subsets of its primary role which is wall breaking. It doesn't really do anything else outside of that. I tried to look into some defensive sets sometimes, just wasn't there. Um, it's boosting moves are effectively non-existent. The only real question is uh, life orb, scarf, or some 
to really go deep into its move pool to try and make a unique set of which I tried a few in practice uh, with my front office. Unique sets utilizing some defensive spreads that can take advantage of specific Pokemon to set up rocks, uh, pop off Super Fangs, which is a move that people don't often think of uh, that's very beneficial to it because it's going to have switch-ins and applying coverage to everything is difficult to do sometimes, but it's a fun Mon. Uh, I think it deserves its spot in Tier 3. It's very powerful. Um, we have Grand Bull. I think the Intimidate pressure is great. I think it's got good offensive presence, and I love that it has Heal Bell. Um, it's a good Tier 5 pick. It won't come to most games, but when it does come, it'll it'll help a lot. Uh, the Intimidate and the cover or the typing that it has is really helpful, and I, I think it's a very very deserving of a top spot in its tier, Tier 5. I don't think it would get picked if it were Tier 4. It's not valuable enough for that. Metagross, uh, shouldn't have traded for it. It's a good Pokemon on the right team. It was not right for my team. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Regirock, I needed it. At the time that I drafted it, I needed it. Um, I think it's easy to take advantage of. Um, it's done a good job in the matches I brought it, but it's also been a big weakness for me in other matches. Uh, I think it's deserving of its position in its tier, and I thought it was something I needed on my team. Maybe it turns out something could have been better in that slot. Uh, we'll have to see in the future. Ditto. Love Ditto. Uh, <laughs> it didn't really shine this season because of the team it was on. And then Miss Magius was just never right for me. So uh, that's my alarm saying I have to go. Um, so let me just quickly go over a, a few final notes um, about the team. I, th I just think the team, it ended up playing this... None of my wall breakers hit so hard that they just blast through things. Uh, Pokemon like Kurum Black um, can do that, and Manaphy was that role for me, but it needed to set up in order to do that. Fortunately, it had a, found a lot of times to accomplish that, but in general, it uh, my team was lacking in wall breakers. Um, my setup was poor. Uh, it, I had, for example, Swords Dance on Mega Absol, Calm Mind on Cresselia and Agility on, and on Zapdos. Yes, there were other options, but true fearful setup. Things, you know, Dragon Dance Sweepers, things like that. That The setup is obviously something you need to prepare for. I didn't have that, really. Um, you have the answer to set up risks like Swords Dance on Absol is, okay, weaken the Absol or punish it or outspeed it or and then kill it and you know not giving it a free turn to accomplish that setup is something that good players can and will do and so I think it was a little too obvious and, and I, I felt lacking in that regard so I ended up playing this kind of offensive game where my real only defensive answers to things were Zapdos and Cresselia and they fit their roles effectively, but then I just, a lot of the time in the games I lost, I wasn't able to kill things, and that ended up being my problem. And I couldn't generate a lot of momentum outside of making risky, uh, risky gamble switches. Sometimes those paid off for me, and sometimes they didn't. And uh, that's, that's that. The team, the team is a bunch of superstars. Really solid mon. I mean, the top six Pokemon you see on the screen, ignoring the Latias and replacing with Manaphy, are absolute devastating superstars and everyone's scared of all of them and they don't work well together uh, the typing wasn't great i wish i had a better steel type i wish i had an effective dragon type that wasn't latias i wish so many things different for the team um, but all those pokemon were great and i saw on paper the same thing that all the fans saw when they were boarding my draft as one of the best ever and you know what it, until people started learning the answers to it, I think I think maybe they were right. I had the strongest 3-0 lead the GBA has ever seen in the beginning of the season, and I kind of let it go. Um, maybe my prep towards the end, I wasn't putting as much time in, and that's something I got to live with, that I didn't put in the time, and it meant that I got a lot of losses, but I also made some bad trades, and I think that's the big problem. So that's my full rundown of what happened this season. And uh, I'm sorry if I let you guys down, but I tried to maintain positivity in all my videos throughout it. And being 4-8 at the end of the season, 
it's the worst record I've ever had and I, I don't feel good about it. But on the bright side, uh, it means I get a pretty good draft position next season. Actually, weirdly, even though it's such a worse record, relative to the rest of the league, I'm still in the same position I was last season anyway, even though I went, I was one differential away from the playoff. One differential. Like, plus one on my differential, I made the playoffs. Uh, and for some reason, same position relative to the rest of the league that I am now. So I don't know why that happened. <laughs> That's just math. Math is crazy. Divisions are crazy. Um, and we'll see what happens next season. I, I love all these guys, and I hope they all come back. We've got a really competitive league here. We really do. And so I want to talk about the playoff picture. Uh, and I'm just going to go through like I did last season and make my picks and see how this works out. We got uh, Dan and uh i see this is is the end of the season and i always make this mistake the chim chargers is not chim pack the chim chargers is mv um dan is a scraggly guy and what i mean by that is he can weasel out wins that you would not expect against opponents that you would not anticipate he is a true contender he is a playoff run champion uh, he's he won last season. He is a champion. He made the finals the season before that and Despite that and even though I love the guy I can love Dan love a drive that guy is an amazing battler I still I think I have to give it to MB because he's just done so effectively this season He preps well. He's a great battler. He's got a great mind and um, the team that Dan drafted this season, I think he will agree with me if he watches this uh, in saying that it just doesn't quite work for him. Um, and I think he will rectify that next season because he's great in the draft format, but he wanted to try something new and it had the potential to be very strong, but it didn't end up working out for him. He pulled back amazingly. He had a terrible start and he really very strongly pulled back and he kept his, kept his eye in there because he's a great player. But I think MB has the has the jump on this one. So Jim Chargers uh, are taking my, my vote there. The Boston Red Sox and the Arcaniners. I'm going to give that one to the Arcaniners. Um, yeah, I think Nick is uh, an incredible battler also and did significantly worse this season than I thought he was going to and I haven't I'll be honest that I haven't seen every one of his matches I've seen a few of them uh, and he's a great contender and I think he'll give George a run for his money here's the thing George is not a playoff player he, he chokes in the playoffs and I mean that in the most loving way possible brother I really do and I I'm I'm voting for you despite that I'm voting for you I'm voting against a team uh, that has a a player a coach that's a good playoff contender and that, I've done this twice I, Envy is untested in the playoffs but I'm voting him to beat someone who's great in the playoffs and you are horrible in the play George look at my face right now you are terrible in the playoffs please prove me uh, prove me right in this bid here I think you will take this one um, I, I think you you have the jump on the Red Sox and I, I think you can take that win here's the thing about the next matchup I'm going to talk about. Fizz and Chim. Um, these guys, I think, are very closely matched. I think Fizz has a great mind for Pokemon. But I think Chim has this one. Um, these two have played each other twice already. And... They both have very unique teams, as well as unique playstyles and unique visions. And I, I'm gonna give this one to Chim. And that's a hard decision. I think it'll be close, and it won't surprise me if Fizz takes it. But something about the matchup, something about the threats that I see on both teams, and the ability to answer one another i think i give it to chim if he plays his cards right he plays his pokemon right and he sees the battle for what it is i think he wins this one the utah jasmine and the real Maril. coop you are amazing he's one of my favorite people ever but miguel is super talented and uh miguel's my boy and I'm sorry, I gotta give it to my boy, even if I actually thought he was going to lose, which I don't. I think um, in the pa I've seen your guys' past matchups, and usually Miguel takes the cake in those matchups. Um, I think 
Coop has come so far with a draft that I didn't consider very good. Um, and he's put on amazing pressure on his opponents in a lot of ways, and he has a good record. But I think that Mogwai, if he actually devotes time to preparing, because last season I, I feel like he underprepared, if he devotes time to preparing for this matchup, I think we'll take the cake. In the next round, I think... You know what? I'm really curious about who will win between Chim and Miguel. I, I, both these guys I, I consider friends of mine, and, but I'm going to give it to Miguel again. And I believe that uh, MV would beat George. That one's a really hard tell, uh, a really hard sell. George, uh, I think the reason I take it away from him is because of his history in the playoffs. I think... Ah! <laughs> Okay, that's my phone telling me I really need to go. So let's finish this one up. MV has a better record, barely, than George does. But that doesn't mean anything in the playoffs. Records don't mean anything at all. They really do not. You guys are here, and now it's about the matchups. George needs to play his team uh, to a degree that plays against MV's strengths. And MV is a capital... Uh, capitalizer or I almost said capitalist <laughs> one who capitalizes uh, I guess and uh, really picks on the elements of your team that are the weakest and he can devise sets that are super unique at doing that George has to prepare hard he needs to really keep his mind in the game but in the past he's lost matches for example against Tom because they found that weakness in his team. And I think Envy is probably the best in the league at doing that. So I predict um, Mogwai and Envy in the finals. <laughs> and it's anybody's game at that point. But uh, I'm, I'm going to root for a two-timing champion. I'm going to root for Miguel in the finals. I'm going I'm going with my boy Mega Mogwai. I'm predicting Real Marill champions of this season six. So that's my wrap-up, guys. Uh, it's kind of a long video, but uh, I hope it gave you guys a little bit of an insight into my view of the season, my view of the postseason, and maybe what I'm going to be looking to doing next season. Please do stay tuned on the channel. Keep your subscription. Uh, I, I might not... <laughs> I might not post that much in the off season, but um, I'm considering doing a let's play. Let me know in the comment section down below. I posted it on Twitter, but if you guys are curious in seeing me do a let's play for Sun and Moon, um, I would be I'd be willing to do it um, if people are interested in that. I've been trying really hard to avoid spoilers. Every time there's a new generation, I really like to do that. Really, just avoid the spoilers, and I'm gonna try and do that again this season. So, or this year. Uh, unfortunately, some things have been spoiled for me, but. Not a lot, actually. I've done a really good job. I don't know any of the new Pokemon. Not a single one of them. The only thing I know is that there are forms. And I don't even know what that means. Just I saw that on a news article that I read that unfortunately decided to talk about video games for <laughs> for some reason. But that's, uh, that's going to be it, guys. Um, thank you for supporting me during a great season. And thank you... I think 30 of you bought t-shirts. So thank you so much for doing that. If you guys want to send me any of your pics on Twitter, uh, I, of course, leave my link to my social media in the in the link down below please send me pictures of you guys in your shirts i'd love to retweet them and and uh talk you guys up and maybe i'll even do something in the off season with you guys as a thank you for for supporting the giantes and if you want to get a giant shirt because my logo is like one of the best ones out there <laughs> then i'll leave that in the description down below as always my name is jim leader geo you guys are the champions the champions wow you guys are the challengers <laughs> thanks for stopping by and i'll see you guys next time